thank you so much. I am with uh, uh, a packed house of young professionals here in Sioux Falls, and I'm thrilled by it. You know, uh, for, for, for generations in this state and in this town, we talked about kind of creating an environment where, uh, where young people uh, would, would want to eventually move, move to. Uh, we, we had a brain drain going on in South Dakota that you could not imagine, uh, and right here in Sioux Falls too. And, and what, I, what I love right now is that we've got an environment where not only people are moving back to young professionals, uh, they're moving back to Sioux Falls, but, but maybe more importantly, they're not leaving. They're, they're, they're staying. Uh, they, 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 they're finding their careers. They're finding a good quality of life. They're finding a great place to, to live, and, and, and I love that. So first, I just want to say thank you for choosing this town, this state, as the place to, to, to grow your career, to raise your families, to to get stuff done and, and enjoy the days that you're given. Um, quickly, this is a no-holds-barred listening and learning session. Uh, for the people that are watching at home, uh, we've, this will be a shortened version. We've got about an hour to do this. So rapid fire, I've got these young women and men that are just you know, chomping at the bit uh, to make a difference in this town. And, and so they're engaging the mayor today. So, so let's go. Uh, who's who's going to ask me the first question? Please. Yes. Thank you. What's the biggest challenge facing Sioux Falls today? There's, there's a number of them. I mean, things are going very, very good. Uh, America's next boom town, record construction, you know, a lot of, a lot of confidence. Uh, people are dreaming big. They're visionary, uh, all that. But I think the, one of the biggest challenges that we have right now is that, is that we are booming. We do need to stay ahead of this growth. Uh, we've got three to 4,000 people moving into our town every year. Um, I'm an original Yankton buck, okay? I'm a Yankton boy, uh, now blessed to be the mayor of Sioux Falls. Yankton's about 16,000 people, okay? So we are creating a new Yankton every four years. I mean, think about that. Uh, libraries, roads, um, uh, sewer lines, parks, fire, police, and we're, we're doing all that and we're creating a new Yankton every four years. So for that, uh, it, it takes a, you know, a lot of foresight, a lot of planning, a lot of investment, and, uh, but, it, but it's thrilling. You know, I'd rather be in Sioux Falls any day as the mayor than a town that, that, is, that is dwindling or a city that, it, that is struggling. Uh, so again, I think it's a big challenge, but, but it's one I, I'm thrilled by. And, uh, and, and, and I think we're doing well. Uh, staying ahead of growth, living within our means, um, investing in quality of life, repairing infrastructure, um, and still keeping our town safe. Uh, so good things are happening. So thank you. Thanks for having the guts to ask me the first question. All right, come on, who's next? Yes. Hi. Uh, just curious here, you know, you're big on the downtown and all that community built around it, and I think a lot of good things have come lately about downtown. What industry or business specifically, or what do you think would be the next step for Sioux Falls to, you know, go the next mile to develop downtown more? Derek, downtown is your, well, here's, the, um, five and a half years ago, downtown was certainly struggling, and, it, and it's not struggling anymore. Uh, we've got, you know, new places to live, new places to play, and yes, new places to work, uh, which is just thrilling to me. Uh, we are filling up buildings with, uh, with, with new businesses, um, uh, some white collar, some retails, uh, and, and so that, that, that's just great. Here, here's the deal. Uh, we are gonna ink the deal with Burlington Northern here. Uh, in fact, I invite all of you on, on the Monday the 30th, uh, we're having a big celebration where we will sign the deal with Burlington Northern. And the big news is that there's gonna be 10 acres of land right in the heart of our city, right in the smack dab in the, in the heart of our downtown, that's gonna be available uh, to create new places to work, new places to play, new places to live. So Derek, what type of business? Uh, I, 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 I mean it, I think the sky's the limit. I, I don't think there's anything that we cannot take on. Now, I don't see probably, you know, industrial thing going on there or anything like that. Probably will be tech, or you know some white collar, 
um, retail, um, uh, things like that. Uh, but, but I do think the, the sky's the limit. And one thing is, is very, very clear, very, very clear. Um, if you want to attract young professionals, uh, downtown is the place to do it. Uh, it, it is. Um, I, I've, lived, I've lived around the country and I, I've traveled the world. My vision for downtown was just a little bit different than, than some others. It, it was. And, um, but I, I, I've seen downtowns that, that, that do well during the day and then they're dead at night. Um, I've seen downtowns that do well when there's this big special event, uh, rock concert, football game, whatever it would be, and then they're dead after that. To me, if you wanted a vibrant downtown, Derek, there was one way to do it. And that was you needed to focus on making it a place to live. Because then you got blood pumping through your veins, you got the drugs pumping through your veins 24 hours a day versus just uh, eight to five or, or during the, uh, you know, the heavy metal rock concert that was going on. And yes, I do like heavy metal. So uh, Derek, thank you, good job, good job. Others, please, would you hand it over to, is that OJ? DJ. DJ, DJ, thank you. I'm also from Yankton. Oh, very good. Which actually is the reason I'm kind of asking this question because you know what um, an important part the river plays in Yankton. Um, and I also work downtown and the, the, what we're doing downtown is great, along the river is great. Is there anything that we're doing right now or is there plans in the, what are we doing basically to clean up the river? Um, because the walk rate is fantastic and it's going to be great, but the river itself is in poor shape right now. DJ, we've been, uh, uh, that's a tough question, but it's a good one. Uh, for the last three years, we've had a, a Mayor's Big Sioux River Summit. And um, uh, we've got another one. This year, it's actually going to be in Brookings, uh, which, which I think is, is, a, is a big, big deal. Because not only do we have to worry about the water in Sioux Falls, but we have to worry about the Big Sioux River uh, up, up north as well, because that's where this water is coming from. When I had my very first Big Sioux River Summit, the very first thing that I did is I brought my fertilizer spreader from home. I brought it from home. And uh, uh, I pounded it on the table in front of all these people. And I said, I'm the mayor of Sioux Falls, and I polluted the Big Sioux River yesterday. I did. I did. I, I used my Scotts fertilizer. I put it in my, my uh, fertilizer spreader, and, and I did the best to keep those granules out of, the, out of the curb and out of the gutter. But I know dang well that some of those granules went in the curb and the gutter, or that eventually some that were in the grass flew, you know, went, went into, the, into the waterway. Um, this mayor polluted the Big Sioux River, and I do it every dang time that I, I fertilize the lawn. And the reason I did that, oh, uh, DJ, was th there's all this pressure about the farmers and the ranchers and, and how they're polluting the waterways. Well, guess what? All of us are doing it too. We're doing it too. You know, we, uh, we walk our dogs and we don't clean up the, the mess that they leave. We're, eventually, that's going to pollute our, our waterways and, and more. So the very first thing, and I'll try to make this short, I wanted to bring attention to that we're all accountable, we're all to blame, and we all better pick it up when it comes to paying attention to, to, to water. Uh, because not only do we need it to, you know, for our own selfish sake to, to drink it, but it's, it's one of the biggest things that you need if you're going to attract industry, if you're going to attract business. They want water, and they want a ready water supply. And so we better take care of this water supply that we have. And so we're talking about it more and more. Um, we're asking tough questions. We're holding folks accountable. We're working in collaboration, which is, which is a big, big deal. And, and I hope that it makes a difference. Uh, here's my fear. Uh, folks, it's going to be the young professionals that are going to really have to, to take up this cause. You're going to have to demand it. You are. We've taken this water for granted way too long. We have. And this Big Sioux River is one of the most, uh, it, it is certainly, it's, it's an impaired body of water. Uh, uh, but it's our primary source of drinking water, the Big Sioux. And so, uh, you know, we, we're going to need your help. You've got to pay attention. You've got to get accountable. And hold your, your uh, public servants accountable, too, uh, to make sure that they are paying attention. So there, there's good things happening. We've got another summit coming up. You're all invited. It's up in Brookings. And you'll hear more. 
Uh, we've got, you know, the media starting to pay more and more attention to it. Community leaders are. There's been prior leaders to me, like, like Mayor Rick Noby, uh, that, that, that have taken up the cause. And, and my challenge, I only have two and a half more years, but I'm going to keep talking about it. Uh, keep making people feel uncomfortable uh, because I think that's what we need to do. So, DJ, thank you. And welcome to Sioux Falls. Thanks for picking. Yes, sir. Let's keep passing the mic down. Thank you. Um, just a quick question I had uh, written down here. I didn't want to mess it up. But uh, at a recent uh, city council meeting, a concerned citizen uh, spoke out about the rising uh, crime rates within the city and how the current administration is handling it. And I guess earlier when you were asked about what the top priority is, I mean, I personally think it's crime. Uh, you know, like yep. every day you're opening the newspaper and there's just armed robberies and shootings. It seems like a lot more going on. So what are you doing uh, in the future to really curb that? Because, I mean, Sioux Falls is the greatest, you know, a lot of people are moving uh, to the city and they're, you know, they're very excited about it. Well, one of the main reasons is because of how safe it is. So yep. if we lose that, we're going to quickly start losing people. And so as a young professional, I'm concerned about the crime. Andrew, where are you from? Uh, right here in Sioux Falls. Born and raised? Yep. Okay, good. If, if there is a, uh, a higher priority than, than keeping your family safe uh, as your mayor, as your governor, as your president, whatever it would be, um, I, I can't think of one. It is, it is the number one factor to me in terms of quality of life. Because can, can you imagine living in a place where, where you didn't feel safe and how that would impact just everything that you, that, that you do? Uh, so, uh, Andrew, keeping this city safe is, is definitely the highest priority we have. And we invest a ton of money into it, whether it be our police team, our fire team, uh, whether it be code enforcement, whatever, uh, community health, whatever it would be. Um, um, I, I, I will, you know, I, I know that every now and then there's an impression of rampant crime. Uh, I, 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 I would challenge that. And our statistics uh, hold it out. Uh, whether it be Chief Barthel or Assistant Chief Burns, we'll compare our statistics now to what they were five years ago to what they are in, in, in other towns across uh, South Dakota and America. And I will tell you, you're living in an incredibly safe town. You are. However, here's the reality. I told you there's three to 4,000 people that are moving in here every year. Not all of them are good neighbors. In fact, some of them are flat out idiots. Uh, and, and, and they do dumb stuff, and they make bad things happen. And, and it's really, really sad. Here's another reality. Andrew, uh, you're a smart guy, I know. Tell me, tell me if there was a, a relevant factor with the most of the crime that's committed here in Sioux Falls, what do, you, what do you think it is? What's the most common factor of a crime that's committed in Sioux Falls? I'll bet you get it. Income. No. Take another one. Thank you, thank you. It's alcohol and drugs, uh, which, which may be tied to income, it may be, so, so maybe that, that's fair. But yes, most of the crime that happens in Sioux Falls, South Dakota is because of someone that was hammered or they're on drugs or they're just, they're just not, not in, in, in making the right decisions. And uh, my dad was an alcoholic. He, did, he drank most of his adult life. Uh, so I know what it's like to, to, to live with someone or to be with someone who, uh, who's dealing with a, a personal challenge like alcoholism or, or drug abuse or, or mental illness or whatever it would, would be. The reality is, I, I don't know how much more I, I'm, I'm going to live here on earth, but I'm not going to solve alcoholism and I'm not going to solve drug abuse. I'm, I'm not. And I'm not going to solve homelessness and I'm not going to solve poverty and I'm not going to solve mental illness. But what we do well in Sioux Falls at least we don't put our dang head in the sand and give up. We do tackle it here uh, through social service agencies, through nonprofits, through private industries who, who really want to uh, keep, keep, keep working through it. Um, you know, Heritage Park, uh, it's, it's a topic in town. Uh, I tackle it head on. Um, I, I, I go to Heritage Park. I engage not only the neighbors on the outside of the park, I am engaging the patrons of the park, some of which are flat out hammered. But I engage them, because I'm not going to give up on them. I have to serve them as much as I have to serve you know, all of you. Uh, but what you realize, Andrew, is that this is an issue 
that you just keep, keep working on. Our police team does it, our community health team does it, our fire team does it, our legal team does it, and, and this community does it. So um, it is one that I, uh, I still relish it, uh, but keeping our community safe is, is a big, big deal. Um, we were just named one of the top five retirement communities in America. And the, one of the primary reasons we were named it was because this town is so safe. Uh, it is. It is. Uh, but you are going to, sure, every now and then you'll, you'll hear about someone who uh, robbed a casino. You will. Uh, or someone who had a fight in a park. That is reality. And, uh, uh, and one thing, too, media, media is so quick now. I mean, it, it, if, if there's something that happens, you know about it immediately. Uh, that, that's, that's not a bad thing. But, but it does, it makes you more attuned to the things that are happening in your town. So there's this impression, Andrew, that, oh my gosh, you know, uh, bad things are happening all over the place. Uh, in reality, it's not. But, but thank you. That was a challenging question, and I respect it. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Elizabeth, go ahead. <laughs> then we'll grab it. We'll bring it over to this side. Okay, Elizabeth, go. I just wanted to see Christy get up. Uh, what's been the most uh, unexpected or surprising part uh, or lesson that you've discovered during your tenure as the, our mayor? <clears throat> I, I, and let me grab that, so <laughs> thank you. And, and I should have known this, Elizabeth. I should have known it. <clears throat> I, am, I am one of the most competitive people you'll ever meet. Uh, it's a strength, but it's a terrible weakness, too. Okay. Um, also, I do want everybody to like me. Uh, and in fact, I'd like you all to love me. Here's the reality. When you're the mayor, uh, there's, you know, every day you have to make decisions on behalf of, of the people that you serve, on behalf of the community that, that you're, you're trying to make better. And Elizabeth, here's the reality. Uh, no matter what I do or say or, or decision that I make, the reality is every time uh, it's at least four out of 10, four out of 10 that think, you know, what was he, what was he thinking? Uh, why did he do that? Uh, it, it's four out of ten. It is. Uh, when I was first elected, uh, my, my next door neighbor, he said, now Mike, you have to understand something, young whippersnapper. He goes, Here, here's the deal. 51% is, is, is a win. You know, 50% plus, plus one. So, you know, just anything over is a win. Uh, and I go, well, well thank you. Uh, his name is Terry. I said, thank you, Terry. And then he said, if you ever get 60% or more on anything, that's a landslide. And, and that was, I, I just go, no, 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 Terry, no. That, that can't be right. That is real. That is real. Uh, this, this public service gig, if you can get six out of ten people to kind of to uh, um, go with you, uh, on, this, on this journey, that's a landslide. And, and that's been something that I just really never realized. And, and one, one other reality is, is that, yeah, I want people to like me. Um, and so I'm really working hard to, to really make a difference. And reality is, uh, no matter what I do, uh, there's, there's four out of 10 folks who really would like a new mayor. And that's hard for me. It's hard for me to, under, to understand. You know, um, um, so, so that would that I, I don't know if that's maybe too personal, uh, but 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 it is reality. But but the good news is that remember it does only need to be fifty one percent. So if you if you work together, if you communicate, if you find common ground, if you compromise, you can actually get stuff done in government. And my goodness, we have been tackling stuff that 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 for years just laid on the shelf, and we're getting it done. New event center, um, uh, record road repair, pension reform. We did pension reform in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. 
We are going to save $300 million over the next 25 years for the taxpayers because we did pension reform in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Unheard of. Um, um, getting the rail yard redevelopment project done. We've been talking about that since 2005. New indoor pool since 1950. Uh, the event center, who knows? Uh, and what are we going to tackle next? But these are, we, you can get things done uh, if you do compromise and, and, and work together. So good job. Thank you. Thank you. It's probably too personal, but oh well. There you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, yes, please, Megan. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Um, just want to tell you, my husband and I just celebrated our 10th anniversary of living in Sioux Falls, so we're pretty proud of that. Um, don't have any plans to leave. You know, we're really happy with the quality of life that we do have here. I um, wondered if you could talk about, um, on the community health side, if we can go back to that a little bit. Um, wanted to thank you for the continued investment in Live Well Sioux Falls, and I saw the next budget has some more money added to that, and I think that's great. Um, could you talk about community health and, you know, complete yeah. streets, active transportation, that kind of stuff that kind of flies under the radar a lot of times, but really does, you know, how it, how it affects our quality of life here. Megan, thank you. I, uh, you know, quality of life, uh, uh, public health, public transportation, um, sustainability, you know, all these things that, uh, that, that young professionals really still care about. Um, um, I, I'm worried that we're losing ground on it a, a bit. Uh, and, and one of the reasons I'm most worried about it is that in the olden days, we used to rely on the federal government to kind of really invest in, in all that stuff. Uh, and now the federal government's really broke. And, and so they're really cutting back on some of those things like uh, community health, public transportation, sustainability, you know, all those things. So, so the reality is, if we're gonna tackle that as a town, if we're gonna tackle that as a state, we better figure out how to, how to do it on our own and how to invest on our, on our own. You know, community health, Andrew, it was Andrew, Community health, that, that topic about alcoholism and, and poverty and, and income and, and yes, maybe even you know, uh, some uh, challenges in terms of diversity. Um, we're gonna have to figure that really a, a lot on our own here, Andrew, as, as we grow as a community, uh, for adding 4,000 more people a year, and, and it's really hard. Um, but it can be done. Uh, I, do, I do, you have to prioritize differently, you do. Uh, but, but that's where that, that kind of those battle lines are, are drawn in terms of what's high priority for you. Public transportation, okay, let, let's talk about it. As I'm amongst young professionals who still wanna you know, uh, ride their bike, they wanna run, they wanna take a tram or a trailway uh, or a, a, a railway to, to work like you do in big cities. And, and I want us to too. I want to invest more in public transportation. I want more, more routes. Uh, I want longer hours. Uh, I want all that. I really do. I mean, I've traveled the world, and it's amazing how all across Europe, for example, nobody drives there. Not, maybe not nobody, but very few people drive there. It's all public transportation. Uh, here, you know, I, I, not only do I have one truck, I have two trucks. Well, actually, I have three trucks. Um, <laughs> And, and uh, I, I'm, I'm an athletic guy, but I drive all around. You know, I, I want to invest more in public transportation. And, and, but but here's, here's also some reality. That, that, that trip from point A to point B on that bus is three bucks. It costs you three bucks. We charge one, okay? Uh, you're business people. You try to sustain that business plan very long, okay? Now, let me give you another one. And this is where your head and your heart are really gonna struggle, okay? Paratransit, let's talk about that. Paratransit. I mean, these, these, these folks that are more challenged uh, with the day that, that they've been provided. Uh, they're either getting older or maybe they've got a physical challenge that doesn't allow them to, to drive that car or that truck or, or even take the bus. Paratransit, it costs us as, as, a, as a team, as a, as a community, as taxpayers, from point A to point B, costs us $27 to $28 per ride. We charge three bucks. 
But our heart is saying, yeah, but boy, you know, it's such an, uh, it's such an important thing. Yeah. But your head goes, how, how do you sustain that? Especially when you have these other public transportation needs. You know, we do have limited hours right now that don't make sense. We've got limited routes right now that don't make sense. We are growing. Remember I told you we're, growing, we're becoming a Yankton every four years. A new Yankton every four years. But yet we're not able to grow our public transportation because of some of the challenges. And uh, the federal government, they're not giving us more money. The state government's not giving us more money, and, and I don't know if they should. But yet when we try to raise rates, oh, that's a, that's a real battle. Um, so, you know, Megan, uh, I don't know how we got there with that, but, but uh, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm on the Public Transit Advisory Board, and I've made those tough votes. Um, yeah, I've, I've voted on that several times, and it is a head versus heart issue. It is. Absolutely. But we're not getting those federal dollars like we used to. We don't get earmarks anymore. No. Um, you know, we, we have capital costs that we really have to worry about. So that, I think it's concerning. I think everybody wants, you know, public transit and, you know, options for people who can't you know, get themselves from point A to point B solo, but you know, how do we do that without major investments? I, I really don't have an answer. So. We, haven't, we haven't raised our, our, uh, our rates for, for transit uh, for a long, long time, and, and that's not good. That's not good. I mean, truly, none of us wants to pay more taxes. None of us wants rates or fees to go up. Okay, but if you think it's the right thing to do, the prudent thing to do, just to let somebody else tackle these tough things, you're wrong. You're wrong. If your family doesn't, doesn't face reality, it's going to catch up with them. If your business doesn't face reality, they'll be out of business pretty soon. The same thing applies with your city. Your city better pay attention to this stuff because things aren't getting any cheaper. Uh, and the demands and the wants and the needs just continue to grow. So good job. Thank you. I love this. Please. Uh, or, I like it to okay. Joe? <laughs> hey, thanks for, thanks for taking the time today. You bet, uh, Joe. I sat in on Darren's talk this morning, talk about two years of record construction activity, and we're on pace for a third year. And that's great. But do you ever worry that um, we, we're growing too fast or when the, when the boom stops, what that's going to look like? Um, does that keep you up at night at all? Uh, it, it, it does, um, but, but less so because we are America's next boom town. Yes, we are. And we've been recognized across the country as America's next boom town. But I'm less concerned, Joe, uh, I, I need a chair. Uh, I'm less concerned, oh, I can't even get this one out. Oh, shoot, <laughs> take yours, okay. Well, shoot, thank you, I'm breaking stuff already. Joe, I'm less concerned, and I'll tell you why, okay? You've got boom towns, uh, like in North Dakota, for example, that they're, they've got one leg on the economic development stool, and it's oil, fracking, you know, and maybe a little bit with uh, some retail, okay? I'm less concerned in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, because we've got multiple legs on this economic development stool, okay? Uh, so the boom can sustain itself longer, and, and let me tell you why. Our foundation is agriculture. And I know none of you believe that, but it is. Our foundation is ag. So the strongest leg or, or the oldest leg on the stool is ag, okay? Uh, then, what, what was next? Banking, banking. Uh, I was the first management associate uh, in that class in 19, well, I'm not gonna tell you. Uh, <laughs> but. Banking, certainly financial services, another strong leg on the economic development stool. Then, you may not believe this, but, but tourism, tourism, retail, of course, incredibly strong. That's where we get all those sales tax dollars. Another leg on the economic development stool. Then, of course, the thing that really got us through the, uh, through the recession was health care. You know, my goodness gracious, this is the place to go if you want to get, get healthy or, or, or get, get help. But, but what's, what's incredible is that not only is it just a place to, to get well, but now we're gonna find the cure for juvenile diabetes, type one diabetes. 
Let's find that cure in Sioux Falls, and we're investing millions to do it. Let's find that cure for breast cancer right here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Let's find it. Let's do this genome research right here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. What an incredible economic development stool that we have. But then, we're not done. We're not done. No, 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 no. Now we've got more blue collar or gray collar that, that is really sprouting up as well. And that is just wonderful. Another economic uh, development stool, uh, leg on that economic development stool. And more, IT, uh, IT, phenomenal what you folks are doing, you young people. IT and, and this, you know, the internet marketing and, and all that stuff, I love it. I love it. Here's why I'm less concerned, Joe. Let's say one of them struggles. Let's say we have a down year in ag, which is possible. Well, we've got five or six other legs on the economic development stool that will keep us going, that will keep us going. Financial services, we did struggle for a while. Well, but we had then, we had all these others that were still doing well. So, Joe, yeah, uh, I'm concerned about downturns every now and then. Um, I'm also concerned about growth, uh, but, but I love the way that we, we plan for growth. Uh, we invest in the infrastructure. We're, we're looking out not only five years, not only 10 years, we're looking out, thank you for the chair, uh, we're looking out 25 years on where we're going next. And we're also collaborating with other communities, T, Harrisburg, Hartford, Brandon, you know, we're collaborating with them as well as we're very, very blessed. The state of South Dakota, uh, they do a good job too. Uh, they recognize that, that when Sioux Falls does well, South Dakota does well. And this mayor realizes that when South Dakota does well, Sioux Falls does well. And so this collaborative effort that we've had with the state um, has been great too. So, Joe, that's kind of a long-winded answer. I had to break a chair to, to do it, um, but, but I, 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 thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thanks. Yes, back there. Hey, Mary, here, there. Hello. Um, I'm Nate. Um, thanks for coming today. Thanks for taking the time. You bet, Nate. Uh, my question is related to downtown. Um, I am one of these people that grew up in Sioux Falls. I took off for a little while, and I came back, and part of the, part of the reason I came, well, the reason I came back is because it's Sioux Falls, but... Part of what helped me come back was a vibrant downtown, so I'm very interested in plans for the future. Um, two questions. One, what's the plan with the railroad land? Yep. Two, uh, what's going on with TIF? We right. saw a very successful TIF product, uh, project go up about five years ago, and then I've, he or I've heard, I don't have any specific information, but people are applying for TIF for current or planned projects, and um, they've been denied or it's not forthcoming, or it seems like your administration's not big on TIF. So, well, Nate, I'm gonna, Sorry. I'm gonna jump on that one. Get ready. Uh, get ready, Nate. Uh, uh, first of all, I, again, I, thank you. The rumor, the speculation, the innuendo, uh, I, it, it drives me crazy. Uh, Nate, uh, we have done more TIFs in the last five and a half years than the city did before I was elected mayor. Uh, we, new, right? we, we, I'm sorry? TIF is a kind of a new concept. No, so no, no. It's been around a long time. Uh, and it's really only the, one of the few economic development tools that you really have as a community uh, to really spur on development in, in some of these areas that, that really, really need it. Uh, they're blighted. Uh, there's some issues. So, no, we use TIF in a grand, grand way here. And, in fact, if you look downtown, most of the, uh, the development that you've seen, we've used TIF to, to make that happen. Um, now, TIF though shouldn't be easy. It shouldn't be easy. Uh, I can't think of, a, of, a, of something that we started with TIF and then it didn't follow through. TIF should not be easy. Uh, and there was one in particular that I think got, I think I know where you're going, it was Washington Square, okay? It was one that the media covered in a grand way. Uh, in terms of, oh my gosh, the, the mayor and the city is not supportive of, of Washington Square. Nothing could be farther from the truth. I mean, a grand project. Uh, loved it from the beginning. Uh, certainly wanted to evaluate TIF in terms of its, uh, its potential, in terms of uh, partnering with that, with that project. 
However, there was probably some, some disagreement or some concern in terms of how much TIF should be utilized for that project. And most importantly, when you work on TIF, you have to follow the rules. Uh, TIF can only be utilized for certain things. Uh, and so what we wanted to do is to make sure that this TIF would be utilized in, in the most appropriate way. Um, and, and that's what we did. And, and I, I loved the process. Uh, I loved how we worked with the investors and the dreamers of Washington Square at the same time working with the city to again find that, that common ground or that compromise so that ultimately we can get things done and, and represent the city well. Uh, you know, since that article, not article, because it wasn't just an article, there was, it, was, it was talked about in, in, in all kinds of, of ways. Um, uh, again, I think that we've done a great job trying to explain what is happening with TIF and why it is so important. And as Darren Smith will attest, uh, we've made more announcements on TIF and we're going to continue to make announcements on TIF. However, they have to be valid and they have to be legitimate. And, and it shouldn't be an easy process uh, to do it. Uh, Darren, if I could just ask, I mean, uh, in, if you don't believe me, Darren, how many TIFs did we do prior to my administration? There were a total of, sorry, thank you. There were a total of nine TIF districts approved in the history of the city of Sioux Falls prior to 2010. This month, the 10th TIF district was approved just in the last five years. And next month, when the Washington Square TIF will be approved, it will be the 11th. So. Historically, the city of Sioux Falls has approved a TIF district about every three years. We've approved, supported, and approved TIF districts about every five and a half months. So easily, we've doubled the number of TIFs in the history of the city. And I had no idea Darren Smith was coming today. I had none, I had none. So, uh, but but again, thank you, thank you. It is it is one of those uh, one of those things that uh, um, every now and then you're going to. Um, uh, hear about, well, maybe the mayor or the state or this entity doesn't support this or that, their anti-economic development, whatever it would be. Oh my goodness gracious. Are you kidding me? Uh, I'm a 25-year corporate America guy. My job was to grow things, were to develop things, were to create things, were to make things happen. I love this stuff. But here's the deal. I will listen to special interest groups, but I will never be beholden to them, ever, ever. My job is to represent all of you, all of you, and to focus on the city as a whole. And that's hard, uh, but, but it's the right thing to do and it's the important thing to do. So if it takes some extra work, some extra due diligence, some extra, maybe even media scrutiny, it's worth it in the end because you get a better product uh, for, for all the citizens uh, going out. So good job. I love that. It was a, one of the toughest ones I've had yet. And we still have, what, 15 minutes? We have 20. We have 20? Okay, great, great. So thank you. Good job. Uh, is there, is there I one? I it, a, a sticker. No, no, wait, no, no, no. We need, we need the, the we need the, land. oh, gosh. Oh, thank you. Thank you. When? The, the question was, what's the plan for the railroad land? Um, uh, oh, and that was interesting, too. When I, during my campaign, the second campaign for mayor, there were actually people out there saying, well, the mayor is holding off on the rail yard redevelopment thing, uh, you know, until he gets reelected. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. One of the most challenging, most convoluted projects I've ever had the pleasure to work on. And you can't imagine all the work that was going on behind the scenes, all the the sweat and sleepless nights, uh, people like Diane Best, Josh Peterson, Mark Cotter, Burlington Northern, Senator Thune's office, Senator Johnson's office, um, the, uh, Governor Dugard's team. You can't imagine all the work that was going into this thing behind the scenes. And ultimately, we are gonna sign, sign the deal on, on uh, the 30th of, of this month. Here's where we're going now. Um, uh, I'll sign the deal. Then basically, Burlington Northern and the city, they've got about two years to not only strengthen their, 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 uh, their, 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 um, their lines outside of town, but also it gives us two years to, to remove the track as well as have Darren and team begin to work with dreamers, builders, investors, 
in terms of what we're going to put on that 10 acres of land. Um, and then in about oh, two, two and a half years, we'll start to put shovels in the ground and really create this grand, this grand thing. Now, I have my own vision, but I'm going to be done being your mayor by that time. Uh, you know, I've traveled all across the world, and, and I love these grand, these grand city squares that are in Europe. Uh, you know, all around are these grand buildings, and then right in the middle is, is green space, and it's just, it's just wonderful. You know, places to work, places to play, places to live. But, but I, I think that what we'll do is we'll take that 10 acres of land and we'll basically s begin to kind of chop it up a little bit in different, different parcels. And then we'll make people, uh, we'll, we'll call them RFPs or, or something like that. And then we'll make people compete with their dreams. And uh, then as a city, we'll decide what ultimately wins on those different parcels of land. And then, uh, you know, we can, whether we do it in all in five years or 50 years, I don't know. Um, but I really believe this. I, I think it's the, <clears throat> for me personally, it's the one that I'm going to remember the most. Because <clears throat> the event center will be there for 50 to 70 years. The indoor pool, 50, maybe 50 years. Pension reform, about 25 years, we'll deal with that. You know, a road lasts about five to 10 years. This is one of those deals, when, and this is what makes public service so dang, so great. <clears throat> this is one of those deals where we got it done <clears throat> and it's gonna be part of this city for three, four, five hundred years. And I don't know what it's gonna be, I don't know what it's gonna, but it's, it's just phenomenally fun <clears throat> <clears throat> to be part of something <clears throat> that's gonna last five, six hundred years. And uh, uh, it wasn't getting done, uh, but yet we found a way to do it collaboratively. Uh, the federal government, uh, that's getting a lot of grief, you know. <clears throat> um, uh, the state government, um, the city, and then yes, this entity called Burlington Northern, the railroad. There is not a more powerful business in all of America, even more so than Major League Baseball. This is the most powerful entity in America, the railroads. And yet, we came together, government and private entity coming together to make, to, to make something happen that's going to impact this, this town for five, six hundred years. And uh, that's the fun. So thank you for, thanks for, you. uh, you're welcome. You're, I, I'm thrilled. I, folks, I got to tell you, I, I'm, a, I'm a corporate America guy, 25 years of doing it. And I loved it. Uh, it. The training I got in business was phenomenal. I loved it. Um, and yes, I did just fine. In fact, I probably did more than fine. But when I left, my heart was empty. You, you couldn't give me any more money. <clears throat> I couldn't buy any more stuff. You couldn't give me a better, you know, promotion or stock option or whatever. Um, my heart was empty. I, my heart <clears throat> is pumping at a way that you can't imagine in this public service gig. I love it. I love it. Uh, and and uh, so that's where the passion comes from. You know, you can't imagine the people that lift me up every day as your mayor. I love it. Yeah, you got to deal with some hard people too. But, but the people that I engage that um, just, just keep pushing me on or, or encouraging me, I, I just love it. That's why this is one thing I, I, I want to make sure you understand, young professionals, is that you, you, you too, we need you. There's 50 different committees in city government. There's nonprofits all over the place. There's churches, there's schools. They need your passion, they need your leadership, they need your stewardship, they need you to get involved 
in this town to make it better. And you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Now, you're not going to make as much money. You won't. You won't be able to buy an, a new car when you do it. But the, 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 the thing that happens in your heart is, is just, is so, it's just wonderful. It's just wonderful. Uh, someone the other day told me something about, you know, the, the greatest you, gift you can give is, is, is of your time. Because here's the, here's the reality, is that, you know, when, when you lose a day, you don't get it back. You gave your time. You gave that hour. You gave that day. You gave that week. As a steward, you don't ever get it back. You don't. You don't. Uh, my, my dad died at age 62. And, and it scares me to death because I'm getting closer to 62. Uh, I'm 35 right now. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm getting closer, and, and, and so I have this fear that, you know, I'm, am I going to get another day? Am I getting another day? So th thank you for your kind comments. Thank you for challenging me. I love it. Let's keep it going. Others. Yes, miss? Okay, we'll go Sorry. there, and then we'll go there. Thank you. Real quick, um, no, I'm Kristen. No. I was uh, glad to hear the questions about the TIF because uh, that was what I was looking for, too. Um, I work here in Sioux Falls, but I live in Canton, and I'm a city commissioner in Canton. Thank so, you. Um, Hallelujah. Yeah, um, and so, which is great, um, and uh, I enjoy that service as well. Um, it's been fun. I was in Darren's session earlier today, um, seeing how the TIF is useful for um, getting some things done and interesting uh, projects that we have going on in, in Canton for infrastructure and investments we need to make. Um, but I, I wondered if you had any advice for some of the smaller communities yeah. that, you know, look at the same kinds of issues in a microcosm of, of what Sioux Falls has going on, um, where, like all cities, you have folks who aren't as necessarily necessarily progressive minded when it comes to making those bigger investments. Um, the TIF is a scary notion for yes. some of them. Um, and you have to make big decisions as a commission, as a group of, of volunteer civil servants, um, to make decisions that are, are you know, expensive to make. Um, do you have any suggestions on how to build consensus and how you make those decisions on things like the TIF? I do. And, and is, it, is it Councilor Kristen or Commissioner Kristen? Commissioner. Commissioner. Uh, first of all, thank you for your service, Commissioner. I, I would love to come to Canton. I, I, go, I, go, I go across the state and I'll give these presentations on, on how, I, on how uh, uh, I, I think that I could help them or the, some ideas that I've learned that maybe they could, they could learn from. But Commissioner, here's one thing that I, that I really recommend, whether I'm in Yankton or in Brookings or in Canton or where it would be, and it's, and it's the hardest thing, is again, Listen to the special interests, but don't be beholden to them. And most importantly, when the naysayers and the critics and the, the uh, not in my backyard people come out, or the, uh, uh, um, the cave people, uh, citizens against virtually everything, <laughs> um, um, when, when the cave people come out, the NIMBY people come out, uh, those, those folks that are, that are passionate, they're organized, they, 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 they mean well too. But you got to keep going. You got to keep pressing forward. Uh, change is hard. Change is hard. Investment is really hard, especially in an environment where, you know, everybody doesn't want to pay more taxes or, or you know, risk taking is really, really hard, especially in government. Okay. Because what happens, remember what I told you, you you're, you're going to take this risk, you're going to make this investment, you want to make some change happen. And then what happens is that, yes, these organized um, vocal critics, they'll, they'll get out there and they're passionate. And most times what happens, especially, again, I don't want to look at Joe, but, but if, the, if the media gets involved, then that pressure, that intensity goes up even higher, goes up even higher. And what normally happens to a commissioner, to a counselor, to a mayor, to a senator, to a governor, what normally happens is that when the hot really, when it really starts to get hot and bubbly, you get out. You get out. And um, you don't get things done. And so ultimately, that would, I mean, there's so much more I'd love to tell you, but we're, we're running out of time. Um, but that was, don't give up. Keep up the fight. You know, stay in it. Um, the, 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 my, one of my most favorite quotes involves, you know, the, 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 it's called the, the man in the arena, okay? 
Don't focus on the critics, because they're always out there, you know, attacking you. Focus on the folks that are actually in the arena, in the battle, in the fight. Those are the ones that you want to focus on. And that you want to surround yourself with positive people, productive people who are willing to hang in there time and time again. So commissioner, surround yourself, surround your community, surround your leadership with positive people who are willing to take on the battle for your community and then ultimately make a decision and then move forward. And realize this, as you do it, remember, four out of ten are going to be mad at you. Thanks for your service. Do we have time for one more? One more question. One more question. Let's go right back here. Thank you. And tell us your name, please. Hi, I'm Brittany. Thank you, Mr. Brittany. Mayor, for being here today. My pleasure, Brittany. Uh, so we have a little over two years of your service to look forward to yet. And as much as you are passionate about public service, I guess I'm wondering what's next for you. That was the only that. question you couldn't ask. Uh, uh, Brittany, I'm asked that question every day, and, and I'm thrilled by it. I'll try to, and I'm not trying to be political. I'm not. Uh, but but he, he, this is the reality. You have to understand my style. I, am, I take the day that I'm given, and I, I go 110 miles an hour with that day. Uh, if I'm in a tennis match, I am focused on that tennis match, and I want to win it. Uh, if I'm trying to be the mayor of this city, that's what I'm focused on. I am focused on being the mayor of this city for the next two and a half years. I, I want to be a, a, a really good mayor for you folks. I do. Reality is, though, um, when you're the mayor, you can't really do a lot of other stuff. And I have... Remember, this, John Goddard, John Goddard, okay? G-O-D-D-A-R-D, -D -D, John Goddard. Look it up, Google it. He created a magic list of things he wanted to do before he passed away. I also have a magic list. There's 42 things on it. And as I'm your mayor, one of the things that I've realized is that I can't tackle all those other things that I want to do on my magic list. And that's a struggle for me. As much as I love this job, I, I love it. There's still all these other things that I'd love to do with the life that, uh, that, that God gives me. Uh, uh, and so that, that's, that's reality. Also, here's another reality. Um, the thing that, that I learned, and it was really hard, was that um, this is a family deal. A ask, uh, are you married, Commissioner? Uh, ask, ask, ask the, uh, this is a family deal. And um, <clears throat> this was my dream. It wasn't my wife Cindy's. She's had to put up with it since our first date, Pizza Hut, 35 years ago. Um, uh, she's had to put up with it, but it, it, it's, it, that's the reality. So, you know, I, I'm going to be married 30 years here on December 28th, and uh, my bride is an important part of the package, and uh, uh, so is my daughter, <clears throat> my daughter Kylie. <clears throat> it's, a, it's an important part of the deal. And so, you know, it's got to be a collaborative thing. We've we got we to gotta figure this out together as a family, and and ultimately we, we will. But, but yeah, I, I love this state. Uh, I love this country. Uh, there's more that I'd love to try to do to, to make it better. Uh, but here's also the reality. Um, I, it, it's a, this, it's a, the, being the mayor is one thing. Running for mayor, that's a whole other gig. I don't like it. <clears throat> I don't like it. Uh, the last time I ran, they didn't attack me, they attacked my wife. It, 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 it is so hard. When, when you see a city councilor or a mayor or a governor or a senator or a representative or a president, okay, and you want to get mad at them, it's, it, it, it's okay. But you remember the sacrifice as well. Uh, uh, I mean, it is. It's, it's a beast. And, uh, but, but again, my, my style too. You know, the, the harder, the tougher the challenge, uh, the, the greater the sacrifice, the greater the reward, too. And I love it. I love it. So uh, I, I didn't answer your question directly. Maybe I'll end it with this. You know what? If I could have... Hello, Margaret. Welcome. If, if I could, I, I would love to be the mayor forever. I would. I would. But I'm also a term limit guy. So I think that it's good. I think it's good. I think, I think this mayor, after eight years probably needs a break, to, you know, from being the mayor. Uh, and, and so I, I think that's good. But, but thank you, Brittany. Brittany, thank you for asking me that. Uh, I, I don't even know if I answered it. But, uh, but uh, hey, young professionals, this is your town. It is. M keep making a difference. Keep doing great things. And I gotta we're so blessed to have you here. I'm I, just thrilled by it. 
uh, get involved, be leaders, uh, and, and just keep, keep doing the good things. And, and for at least the next two and a half years, thanks for letting me be your mayor. Make it a great day, everybody. Thank you.